Hi, in this slide, I want to talk about should we be paying incentives to people based on a percent of sales, a bigger percent of margin dollars or margin percent, or, or in a sense, net profit, profit before interest and taxes. Clearly, because of financial management numbers and reporting to pay our taxes and so forth, we have evolved to being able to measure easily uh, margin dollars. Uh, and if we said to somebody, go out and get more margin dollars in a saturated market, the easiest margin dollars to get are going to have a very high cost to serve or the highest cost to serve. So you can go get more small accounts, but we're always going to be, our cost service model is going to exceed what margin dollars we can get. And if we tried to price for our service model, let's say, forget it. I'm going to go to Home Depot or Walmart or some, some other place. Uh, but that's a different service model that they're subscribing to. Um, certainly to go out and say, let's shoot a price to win some more volume. What often happens is the customer says, oh, that's pretty good. Let me think about it. Well, that means what they're going to do is go to the guy who already has the business, say, here's last look. If they pass and then we get the business, congratulations. We have more margin dollars, but we have even more cost to serve. So our sales go up and our profits go south and we can't finance the incremental increase in inventory receivables, uh, we're going to go broke um, on volume. We could say, well, all right, let's unbundle some of our services and charge fees for them. But if we're paying people on margin dollars, they're going to say, no, if we do that, that hinders my ability to go get margin dollars because everybody else is giving away the services to get margin dollars. Uh, and it's not what the com our competitors do because they're paying on margin dollars. Um, if we reassign small accounts from sales reps to the small order division, in theory, that's going to be an income hit. But if we actually do the math for each sales rep, we realize that, gee, 50% of your customers are generating 10% of your income. And they're taking up 35% of your time or certainly our inside sales, you know, service forces time. We could literally write you a checkout for what you would have made it from these guys the next uh, year and take the accounts away. And in the year that we have between now and when your your prepaid check sort of runs out, we can go get four times more income by hyper-focusing on five, five accounts and selling service value chain solutions. Um, so when we you know put all these things together, we start to say, golly, the idea that we could double our sales from less than half our existing accounts and substantially all the big guys in our core, historic core niche, and get four times the operating profit from that much more in sales, we, we start to be able to get our head around the possibility that that could happen. Um, but it, it's all going to take a service value chain cell for which we need service value chain math, and that's why we need to be very fluent and day in, day analytical all the time about uh, cost to serve uh, and value exchange management. Thank you.